Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to continue the theme of favorite opening tracks, and I'm going to go back to my the original idea which James Griffiths had, which he still hasn't done. So, sorry, uh, James, I was waiting for you, but uh, I'm looking forward to yours when you come up with it. I've come up with my top 15 solo Beatles opening tracks for albums. Um, so not including compilations or live albums. Um, you know, it could have gone with 12, but I found it hard to um, come up with 15. And at the end, I'll give you a couple that were bubbling under. And, I, and then I'll give you my worst top five off the top of my head, which is probably going to upset some of you, but there you go. So in reverse order, number 15, I'm going to go with a superb opening track from Ram, Paul and Linda's album from 1971, Too Many People. And uh, although the lyrics are quite angsty, um, it's a great, it's a great opening track, very driven and melodic, very well sung, good harmonies from Linda, good sound, um, more, more of a polished sound than the opening album McCartney, as we know, um, quite contrasting in that respect, but, uh, a really driving track to open Ram very strongly with. That was number 15, number 14, we've got the superb opening track from 76's George album 33 and the third and it's, the track is called Woman Don't You Cry For Me and he originally demoed this during the All Things Must Pass sessions but not very successfully or not he didn't take it very much further and here Alvin Taylor's on drums and Willie Weeks is on bass and they get a really nice rhythm sound and it's quite funky and play this one loud good George's return to his guitar playing duties which he'd slightly neglected on Dark Horse and Extra Texture and he plays a lot more sort of fluid guitar such as on this track um, to the album's benefit and to that opening track's benefit number 14, number 13 majestic opening title track from Tug of War Tug of War with really good lyrics probably one of my favourite lyrics of McCartney's entire solo career and I love the middle, the middle bit in years to come, we may discover what the life we lead is all about. It won't be soon enough, won't be soon enough for me. And uh, Danny Lane is playing, chugging along on electric guitar on, on that track. Um, and very well produced by George Martin, sensational orchestration. And I believe they, they came up with what they thought was the finished master and they were gonna put it out. And then they, they took a listen to it and thought, nope, we can do better. So they went back and did it and hence the album got delayed. I remember that album, Put Tug of War, was continually getting delayed because they were sort of improving the production or whatever. It eventually came out in late April, I seem to remember, 82. Number 12, we've got the opening track from Walls and Bridges, Going Down on Love. Um, some people have called this album a bit depressing, including John himself, but uh, in terms of songwriting, it's just, uh, a very, very nice opening song and very good words. Um, very heartfelt somebody, please, please help me. You know, I'm drowning in a sea of hatred. Um, and the band on Walls and Bridges is, is one of the best bands that John had in his career. You know, effortless uh, playing from Jesse Ed Davis, Jim Keltner, Nicky Hopkins, Ken Asher, um, Arthur Jenkins on percussion. Uh, just just a, a great sound and I love that track. It's not perhaps the most upbeat opener, but I, th I think I prefer Walls and Bridges opening with that track versus op if they'd opened straight off with the single Whatever Gets You Through the Night, that might have been more obvious, but I think this is more subtle and there's another similar example to that higher in my list. Um, number t 11, we've got, I did have the CD to show you, yeah, I don't have it on vinyl. Not, it's very expensive to get on vinyl, but this is the opening track to Memory Almost Filled from 2007 from Paul. And this is the wonderful uh, track Dance Tonight. And it just, just shows um, what a simple song it is. If you learn how to play it on the guitar and piano, it says only a few chords, but very effective. And um, it's one of his be best latter day tracks, say no more than that, or no less than that. Um, number 10, uh, one of my favorite albums of all time, 
and the opener, the joyous opener, Love Comes to Everyone. Now, it was released as a single, didn't do anything. I don't think it really is a single material song. It's not quite, not quite, doesn't flow that, that easily um, if one listens to it on the radio. Um, but, you know, having said that, it's a lovely opener with some really nice distinguished guitar playing and, and synthesizer playing from Steve Winwood and the rhythm section, Willie Weeks and Andy Newmark. Um, or on top form, and that's a big favourite. Number nine, we're going to go back to Paul and Wings at the Speed of Sound. And uh, another deceptively simple song, if you l learn how to play it on the piano, there's only a few chords in, in this song, Let Him In, but uh, wonderful. And um, just a, a very uplifting song, you know, just uh, getting the family together, you know, here, the, someone's knocking at the door, someone's ringing the bell, do me a favour, open the door and let him, let him in. Then he goes through all his uh, family members and it's a, it's a joyous track and it works very well in concert whenever Paul's performed it. Number, number eight, we go with the joyous opening track from Extra Texture, uh, You, which was actually, the backing track to that was recorded four years earlier, 71, in, for Ronnie Spector, but never used. Um, so the musicians on this track are different from the rest of the album. Jim, Col Jim Gordon is playing drums along with Jim Keltner and Carl Radel is playing bass and Leon Russell's on piano. Um, but Gary Wright and David Foster and uh, Jim Horn have contributed some stuff on it as well. So it's a bit of a mixture between 71 and 75 and obviously the 75 vocal is from George and it's obviously way too high for his <laughs> register but he delivers it with gusto and um, uh, it's just a very uplifting track. Play this one loud, you, from Extra Texture. Number seven, uh, this is my Argentinian copy of London Town. I'm gonna go with the title track, London Town. I know not everyone likes this album, but uh, you know, it's only my opinion. Uh, people pass me by on my imaginary street. Ordinary people, it's impossible to meet holding conversations that are always incomplete. Well, I don't know. Oh, where are there places to go? Someone somewhere has to know. I just love the words, quite escapist. And um, the video was well-intentioned, although they didn't quite pull it off. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's a gorgeous track and one of Paul's best melodies. Um, no, number six, we're gonna go with Ringo. And the I'm the Greatest track, and what a what a treat for Beatles fans in 73, December, getting this home from the shops, and I imagine I was too young, but putting it on the turntable, and you've got a track written by John Lennon, sung by Ringo, with George and John playing along on the track, and uh, Klaus Vormann on bass, and Billy Preston on organ. I mean, it uh, doesn't get more rapturous than that for a Beatles fan. The only, thing, the only person was missing was Paul, and perhaps if he hadn't had visa problems, because of his drugs bust um, in 72, he might well have been there as well. But anyway, it's three out of four, it, and Paul's on the, on the remainder of the album on separate tracks. And uh, I, just, I just find it absolutely uplifting every time I listen to that song and that album, actually, um, all the way through. Number five, this could have been higher, but I've gone with Give Me Love, Give Me Peace on Earth from George. Um, he led off the album in the best possible fashion with the best track on the album. One of his, I think it might even be my top, I think I did vote it my top favorite George Harrison solo song. So uh, not every day it is, and, uh, but uh, it's just a wonderful way to open the album and a uh, perfect choice. Number four, title track of Mind Games. Again, John has chosen the best track to open the album uh, not that the rest of the album is half as bad as John makes it out to be. I think it's quite decent, but uh, that was the right choice to open the album. And uh, it's a very powerful track, powerfully sung, um, maybe a little bit long or a little bit repetitive, but uh, that's very minor criticism because it's a very powerful melody with descending chords and um, a good sound from the New York band that he's using on this album. Number three, Band on the Run. From Paul. Now, you know, they've tried to overplay this over the years, and even in concert, I don't get bored with Paul singing this, unlike some of his other songs he does live. But the album version is the one I always go back to. Um, 
It's a wonderful song about escape and uh, wonderfully played by the trio of Paul, Linda and Denny who are on top form both instrumentally and vocally and Paul is singing very confidently, very energetically as well and um, you can tell he's having a blast making this album although they were made in difficult circumstances should we say in Lagos, Nigeria with a studio not even being complete when they arrived but uh, it's a it's a lovely song it's a kind of medley of three songs thrown together and um, it works perfectly because the mood starts off kind of solemn when he's in prison and then he breaks out and or he talks about breaking out and then finally um, well the rain exploded with a mighty crash as we fell into the sun is the escape verse and chorus just very uplifting number two um, this is quite high today on my list I just thought I'd give it more recognition it's uh, the opening track to all things must pass I'd have you any time I just think what a glorious understated way to open his solo magnum opus he could have opened it with my sweet lord or what is life that would have been the obvious way to open the album but I just love the way he comes in with this understated song with Clapton accompanying him on guitar with these lovely lovely uh, major seventh chords throughout and co-written by Bob Dylan who, who supplies the chorus um, and then George the verse and it's just uh, a very moving song um, very haunting melody in a sort of minor key in the verse anyway and just uh, yeah it uh, deserves more recognition I know Terry Wilson was very uh, enthusiastic about this song said it was about the best thing that a Beatle had recorded, solo Beatle had recorded up to that point. So that's pretty high praise. And so I put it at number two because I think it's, it's just a perfect way to open the All Things Must Pass album. Number one, no surprises here. Um, gone with Imagine. Um, there was really, there's really no, no other contender to open this album, is there? If you think about it, can you imagine if it was tuck, tucked away on side two or something? So, yeah. Um, Again, this is a song which they tried to overplay over the years, whether it be on the radio or me myself playing it. Um, when John did it live, he didn't do it justice, in my opinion, playing it on the electric piano. It sounds much better on the grand piano with the bass notes, in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, great, great band he's got here. Um, Alan White on drums, Klaus Warman on bass and John, of course, on, on the big white piano and a lovely video to go with it. So this is my top 15 Solo Beatles opening album tracks. Uh, don't expect you to agree, that's fine if you didn't. It's only my opinion, don't get upset if you didn't agree and don't get upset with what I'm gonna say now. So Bubbling Under, I had Starting Over from Lennon and Rory and the Hurricanes from Ringo. Uh, Rory and the Hurricanes came from Postcards in Paradise album which was, I think, 2015, something like that. And starting over, obviously, opens Double Fantasy 1980. Those were bubbling under. And my worst, I, I picked three from Paul, actually. Save Us from Egypt Station, Fine Line from Chaos, Lonely Road from Driving Rain, and Don't Care for Any of Those Three Songs. And from George, Wake Up My Love, the disastrous opener from Gone Tropo, And Cloud Nine from from the Cloud Nine album 1987. I, I don't like that track particularly. It's a kind of minor key dirge to me. Um, <laughs> don't get upset, it's only my opinion. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.